What's going on, everyone? It's Adam and Greg with Grand Sand Golf. In this show, we're doing the 2021 Omega Dubai Desert Classic DFS Picks and Sleepers. Our second European Tour stop of 2021, and we're back in Dubai where we finished 2020. Craig, we're at the Emirates Golf Club this uh, for this, this tournament. Week. Yeah. For this week. Uh, it's actually an old course. I mean, you got that beautiful backdrop there of Dubai. First grass course in the Middle East, par 72, 7,300 plus yards. What do you think of the course, the fit, uh, kind of thing? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, I don't know if you saw this picture on Twitter, but there's a picture of when the course was first built. Uh, you know, yeah. and you can just see desert like around nothing. it. And then you just yeah. see like now it's like, oh, there's a city around it. Um, yeah. But yeah, first course around uh, in the Middle East, first grass course in the Middle East. Um, yeah. You know, we've seen this course a lot. They've been playing here for a long time. Um, there's, uh, you know, quite a few guys who have residents in Dubai. Uh, I right. think they're members or, or this is sort of the home course for them. Um, right. So so lots of experience for, for the, a lot of these guys. Uh, we've yeah. had... If you look back, uh, you know, at the winners here, but but even going further back, like this is the one we've got Ernie Els in the field. He's won this yeah. thing three times. Um, yeah, I'm, it's good course. I'm excited for it. Yeah, I mean, recent wingers, Lucas Herbert, uh, Bryson before he became beefed up Bryson, Hao Tong Lee, Sergio. To me, it's kind of screaming approach. Um, from what I remember of 2020, I think the conditions were a little bit harder. Greens were quick. Looking at the weather... I don't think we're, I think it's going to be pretty nice. I think we're more likely to see the scores kind of high teens, low twenties, like we have previously. A little bit of wind, but, uh, you know, it doesn't, I'm going to keep an eye on it, whether there's a wave to favor or not, but, uh, it, I think oh, it's going to sure. be more consistent, yeah. um, just, just throughout the days. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's jump into it. Two picks, two sleepers, like our usual European videos. I'm jumping off first. I got Sergio Garcia on DraftKings at 9,900. I think this Sergio that we've seen since the Sanderson's win is just the best Sergio we've really seen in a couple of years. I think he kind of back to back to where he has been before a dominant kind of maybe not dominant, but a great, a great worldwide player. He's striking the ball well in his first two events uh, to start 2021. He has plus 1.57 strokes gained T to green. And then obviously his tournament record is pretty stellar here. Ten events. The win in 2017, seven top 25s, only two missed cuts. So he's getting into that top 25 70% of the time when he plays here. I think compared to maybe 18, 19, 20, 20 Sergio, this is the best Sergio we've seen in a while. So I haven't heard his name a lot. I, I really like him. Yeah, I'm actually surprised uh, he's not getting talked about more because I think he's a good fit. Uh, I think that... You know, his ball striking, especially off the tee, has been good for a while. I think, if anything, it's tightened up a touch. But it's really been his, you know, his putting. Is, like, the things that have held him back for the yeah. last few years have just, like, you know, tightened up a bit. And so um, I think that's yeah. we are seeing better results from Sergio. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think yeah. it's a good play. I'm, I'm definitely going to have him in uh, a few of my lineups. Yeah. Uh, my first one here... I'm going right near the top. I think, I mean, obviously, I think Hatton's a good play, uh, but I think Colin Morikawa is too. Uh, he comes at 11,000. Uh, you know, I have been very hard on Morikawa for, <laughs> as, you know, I, I love the guy. I, it's more like, you know, yeah, how, it's, tough, it's love. tough love for you're like, everyone's trying to crown them as the greatest, and you're like, ah, oh, like, let's not yeah. go too far. But we've seen three straight top 10 finishes from him. Um, you know, all around the world, whether it's Hawaii or uh, previously yeah. in, in Dubai. Um, so I, I think his game is in pretty good shape. Uh, <laughs> And, and in terms of you know what what's more the long term form? You look over the last twelve months, he's got 0.54 off the tee in this field. That's fourth. Yeah. Um, he's got and, and so this is uh, this is data golf where they sort of take numbers from different tours and try to equalize them. Um, but then he's yeah. got uh, 103 approach, uh, which is third. But then you look at at the two people ahead of him. Yes, I do. And, want... and yeah. they have different tours well they're different tours but they also have eight starts and 12 or sorry eight measured rounds or 12 measured rounds versus morikawa's 80 measured rounds so i think i think and if I think those guys were to play 80 they'd probably be falling below yeah. morikawa so and it's corn fairy tour and sunshine tour a lot um with the two guys yeah, up top yeah. 
Um, so, I mean, to me, he's either the best ball striker in this field or pretty close to. I think Hatton can Hatton yes. can push him potentially yeah. on approach. I mean, Hatton and him are, are right there, one and two, I think, when it comes to ball yeah. striking and their form with ball striking right now. Um, but the thing that I've been really hard on on Morikawa with has been his putting and, and just that... You know, after the PGA Tour cha- or at, at the PGA Championship, um, everyone seemed to forget that he had had some troubles putting. Yeah. And you know, we look at the past twelve rounds; he's been positive in eleven of them. Eleven of them. So yeah. to me, we're yeah. starting to see a little bit more consistency with that putter. That that it's scary. If 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 that continues, yeah. his results are going to be scary. Uh, and I so I think he's going to be competitive this week. And it's kind of like. His putting struggles is a narrative that doesn't play right now, and it will still get played, but it, it's not reality, I think. Right exactly, now. and and I think that if he does not have a weak putter, I think this guy is going to be trouble, whether it's on the European Tour, the PGA Tour, um, oh, wherever yeah. it is. Uh, uh, we've got no course yeah. history for him. It's his first time at this event, so... I, I I still, I, I think he's the kind of guy that can show up to a course and win there his first time, so... Yeah, I really like Morikawa. I think if it is kind of the second shot approach course, he should dominate uh, kind of the the field. The only trouble I have is when you get when you plug him in an eleven thousand, it's a little bit harder to build lineup. So I will have him. It's just gonna you're gonna have to be creative. There are some guys in the six K that we do like, but. It, it's a very expensive price yeah, tag. Yeah, and I'm not going to go so far as say he's going to dominate the field, um, but I, I'm just saying, like, I, I'm going to play Hatton as well, but I'm just saying that I'm going to plug Morikawa in because he, he can go here and win. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, my second play, a guy that seems to be pretty popular, but, I mean, for good reason, I think Andy Sullivan at 8,900, uh, I really, really like him this week. Uh, to start 2021, pretty decent start, 25th at Abu Dhabi, but... Looking closer at his stats, he was fourth in strokes in approach for the tournament, plus 1.53. Over the past six months, again, looking at the ranks, this is from Data Golf of all the players in the field. He ranks third in strokes in approach, plus 1.06. So only those two above him that were on the other tours. And fifth in strokes in the green, plus 1.24. Very, very, very mixed bag here, uh, previously at Emirates Golf Club. Eight events, four top 12s. Three missed cuts and a disqualification. Disqualification was last year where he uh, signed his scorecard incorrectly. So completely mixed bag here, but obviously can play well. And I think he's got, I think three of those top 12s are in the top five. Uh, So he can really get to the top of the leaderboard. Plus his form, his form is very, very, very Mm -hmm. strong. 8,900, it kind of seems like an obvious play. He might, I mean, he could be the highest owned person in the field just because he is a very easy second plug into lineups, but I mean, it kind of makes sense. It just, it all kind of checks out. Um, uh, So uh, a little bit behind the scenes. um, uh, Today, Adam had all his picks in, so I had to pick around them. And I was looking for my second pick. And man, I just kept coming to Andy Sullivan as like, man, this guy makes so much sense. And and my one concern with that is that I I think that that is going to be a fairly strong, like I think he is going to be highly owned. So, you know... I think you're fine not playing him, um, but but only I I think the only reason not to play him is as a contrarian play because you think his ownership is going to creep up. I think all signs point to him being a good play this week. uh, Other than that, yeah. Um, So the guy I arrived at while I was searching for someone around Andy Sullivan (laughs) was Victor Perez. He comes in 8600. He he is pretty good for him he hasn't been playing a ton of golf um you know Mm -hmm. he did start last week and he did start at uh at the tour championship um uh, sorry the dp world uh tour championship right um right. but two top tens in his last five starts uh he has a really strong middle east record um whether it's uh, you yeah. know throughout the uae um at abu dhabi at, at dubai uh you know this course and and other courses here sure. um but yeah. then also uh, saudi arabia he's got a good record there I just think, mm-hmm. to me, you know, there's guys on the European tour that do well when it swings through the Middle East, and there's guys yeah, that don't. And I think sure. he's one of these ones who does yeah. do well. Um, at this course, yeah. he's got two starts, 29th one, the first year he started, which was 2019, and 16th yeah. last year. Um, so to me, it's just, I, I think that 
I think there's a pretty good chance he's going to be somewhere up there in the top 25. And then if he is somewhere yeah. up there in the top 25 and it skews towards the higher end of that scale, then I'm pretty okay with that. Uh, I think yeah. he's in, you know, last week he ended up with a fairly, the, the finish didn't look good, um, but I think he played better than the finish. Uh, he shot a 76 right. on Sunday to, to topple down the right, leaderboard. Right. Um, but his putter was ugly. His his, his ball striking, you know, yeah. like like we often say, I'd rather a guy coming off an ugly putting week than an ugly ball striking week. Um, yeah, so for sure. his approach yeah. play was good. I, I want to say he was, don't have the number written down, but I think it was maybe 11th in the field in, in strokes gained approach. Okay. Um, so, yeah. you know, ball striking's good. I think that uh, if he can figure out the putting a little bit here uh, in his days off and, and come out there and, and get a little bit hot with the putter, I think he can be very competitive. Yeah, a play I like. A good pivot from Annie Sullivan, I think. I, I haven't made my complete player pool yet, but I, he will be in it. Good form. Yeah, I mean, kind of. I agree with kind of everything said there. Not doesn't really get me too excited, but that's what gets I me think, excited. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that will decrease his ownership. We yeah. we don't know. Okay, jumping into our sleepers for the European Tour, where you're going eight thousand and below. We're going to give you two each. My first is Rasmus Hoygaard at seventy four hundred on DraftKings. So, I mean, people kind of became familiar with Hoygaard over the past year. Uh, last six months, he's 10th in the field in Strosky and TD Green, plus 0. 0.062. Started in Abu Dhabi. It was decent. I think he finished, I forget where he finished, but, I mean, he made the cut. But, I mean, the takeaway, fourth in greens and regulation, uh, 79.18. And if we look at his only previous experience here at Emirates, he missed the cut. I mean, he was way out there. I think he shot 78 on well, Friday he, or something but was he able people, to drive at that point or <laughs> i don't know i mean he's 18 yeah. right maybe he's seven i don't know when his birthday i think he might but... be 19 now yeah yeah but in that uh, tournament he only hit 44 percent of his greens in regulation so if he has his irons working along with his steady kind of dominant driver i think his ceiling is is so yeah. <laughs> high it's just that the floor kind of completely collapses out um in different tournaments so i i like i like where he started 2021 and if he can build off that in emirates i really like the play i think it will be popular because he ha he is that name in the past in 2020 um but i think he gives you a ceiling down here that not many people can yeah i think i mean the, the thing I, you'd probably pick rasmus hoygaard every week if if i let you um be, <laughs> and i think with with decent reason because his upside you know he can go out there and win every week the talent is there um really it's just a matter of he's so young that it's a matter of him polishing his game up um i, yeah. I like him as a gpp play i think he's got huge upside uh, totally. but yeah. prepare for yeah. the fact that he is very volatile he, he'll miss cuts and then he'll top five um and and you won't really be able to predict why it's happening um, other than the fact yeah. that, I mean, yeah, young elite ball striker that when he goes out there and puts everything together, it he can be as, as good as anyone. Yeah, exactly. Completely agree. Uh, my first one here, uh, you know, really pushing the, the ceiling of what we do for sleepers. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm looking at Lucas Herbert. He comes in 7,900. I think he's in good form, uh, tied for 31st or better in five of his last six starts. Uh, yeah. And top 10 in two of his last four. So to me, he's getting decent results. Uh, he was 25th last week. And that was, he was 60, 68 in his first two days. And then went plus three on the weekend to really just fade back. Like, I, I think yeah. it easily could have been a top 10 if, if he would have closed the deal a little bit better. Um, right. Great course history. He started twice here. Seventh <laughs> a couple of years ago. First last year beat uh, Christian Bezudenhut in the uh, yeah. in a playoff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can't ask for much better than a guy who's come here twice and, and top 10 both times, um, you know, regardless of whether it's a win or not. Um, yeah. Just looking at, at, you know, strokes gain total. So is he a good value? That's the argument I'm making is that he is. He's 14th in this field over the past six months in strokes gain total. Um, right. So t to me, it's just a pure value play, uh, obviously, with upside. Um yeah, I, I don't it, know if there's a whole lot more. Like a, you know, it kind of seems like a missed price. Like, it seems weird that he's down here with his form, with his course history. I mean, he's kind of like the horse for the course with good incoming form. Um, so it seems a little bit too obvious. Is it a trap? 
again, an ownership trap or... No one's trying to trap you. It's the ownership, I think, that'll be the potential issue. People are um, trying to trap me. Come on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think it'll just be a matter of, you know, ownership is an issue oftentimes if guys have good course histories, but then if it's yeah. last year's winner, I think it, it adds that much more to it. You know, their name is just that much more in the headlines all week going into it. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. He'll be in my pool. I don't know how much, but he will be. A guy I think that you want to kind of pay attention to in the 6,000s is Sebastian Hazelay. 6,400 on DraftKings. I brought him up for the golf in Dubai, and I believe he missed the cut there. But now he's back at his home course. So looking at his 22... Okay, I guess I'll go down to the bottom point first. He's won multiple club championships at the Emirates. He lives here. That's his home course. He won the club championship at 15. I mean, he's been here for a while. The one, the one thing I feel like I need to know is like I know Stenson's a member of the club. I, I'd like to know like who else is competing in the club championships. <laughs> is it like, you know, well, like your dad or like, like you know, like it's just some dudes or is it like uh, competitive golfers? It's probably not the same field that's in this one, <laughs> but I mean, he just has so. You got to think he has so many rounds on this course. Okay, that's great. That checks that box. Yeah, Looking yeah. at his twenty twenty stats. It's not like he's just kind of like a tournament sponsor invite. He he's legit got the 2020 stats. 13 strokes gain off the tee plus uh just under 0.6, 36 in driving distance, 309 yards and 24th in greens and regulation at 70%. I mean it's it's getting on the fairway, it's getting off the tee and it's hitting greens. All things I love love for this course. The issue is kind of the recent form. 6 events, 4 missed cuts. Three on the number, so he's just missing a bunch of cuts, but he also has popped for a fourth and a 28th. So it's a risky play. It's a for sure risky yeah, play. And, but but I think that's I, the kind of thing you like in GPP. It's a GPP play, and I don't think I, – I haven't heard any chatter about him, which I love. I love that. And there's some kind of interesting young talents in this price range. That I think he might go a little bit over. Well, I think aside from us, people don't usually like to chatter about 6,400 guys because you look like an idiot <laughs> when they when they're not even competitive. But but when yeah. they pay off, oh, is it worth it? Oh, baby. Um, yeah. Speaking of the good young guys in the field, nice nice setup for the segue here. Uh, Takumi Kanaya, um, 6,900. Uh, you know, he this is I guess this is the second time in a row I picked him in terms of his starts. He was he was a sleeper <laughs> of mine uh, at the Sony, um, yeah. the Sony Open in Hawaii on the PGA Tour. Turned pro in October. He immediately had four straight top tens over on the Japan uh, Japan Tour um, yeah. and including a win at the Dunlop Phoenix. I mean, the guy is talented. Uh, he's got three starts in the PGA Tour. Uh, this is since the start of the 2020 season uh yeah. u.s open he missed the cut on the number zozo he was tied for 41st which was about mid middle of the field there right um, right and then sony he missed the cut again on the number um mm -hmm. to me that's you know obviously you'd like to see better than that but middle middle in in results in those kind of fields is not that bad of a thing for a guy who's 22 years old in his first six months of being yeah. a pro um yeah. You look at, at the lower levels, uh, he was just a dominant talent before uh, turning pro. Uh, you know, I forget exactly how long it was, but he was world number one amateur for 55 weeks. I think weeks. he turned pro in October, around there. Yeah, but, I mean, but just he, was, the past... he was number yeah. one amateur for a long time. Um, and yeah. I just think weeks, yeah. one of the things I really like is if you go to you go to him uh, his profile on the world golf rankings, you look mm -hmm. at his his results just on on the Japan Tour events, and I mean it's just top fives and top tens across the board. So yeah, including wins. And they're not pushover events. The the Dunlop Phoenix is not it's not like a cruise in there as a PGA Pro and get a win. It's I mean there's yeah. a a good deal there. But you know one of the things we always talk about is is guys who are winning at the lower level. You know you don't you, you, there's totally. some people there you yeah. know, top twenty top ten consists or like you know somewhere around there consistently but not ever yeah. actually like up in the high like contending and and it looks like he's yeah. doing that basically week in week out so um yeah i think he could easily pop this week but i think even if he doesn't go out there in top five i think he's a high high probability that you're going to get pretty good return on him yeah i completely agree um, I did see an interview with him, I think, late in the fall of 2020. He said that he's actually looking to start his career on the European tour this year. 
So I believe he got a sponsor's invite for this tournament. I believe he's in the Saudi uh, field next week. So for European tour fans, this is a guy to to kind of remember the name and pay attention to. I think, yeah, it's just a matter of time before he breaks out. So be early with him, and it's a great tournament play. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, watch our other videos, and like and comment. Let us know your favorite, your sleeper uh, for the Dubai Dubai tournament this week. Yeah. I want to see where you think we're wrong. And if you think we're wrong, <laughs> yeah. who you think is the right pick. Plant that flag. Plant the flag <laughs> on someone. Good luck, All guys. Right, see you guys.